A troop of Chakma baboons soak up the early morning sun that filters through the canopy of the forest. On some signal, the troop all head off to begin foraging for the day. They head to the edge of the forest and begin to feed on the fruit of the jackalberry trees. These trees have all started to come into fruit and many animals take advantage of this at this time of year. Several of the baboons head into the trees to feed and the rest of the troop gather at the base of the trees to, to feed on the fruit that gets knocked down. Very young baboons remain close to their mothers, clinging to them as they peer around at their troop mates. They hitch rides on their mother's backs as the baboons all move around and eventually head off into the floodplain to continue feeding for the day. I've come across this drainage ditch quite high up here in Mewong National Park and uh, this has attracted a lot of frogs, teeming with frogs it is in fact. There were many tadpoles feeding apparently off of the decaying leaves that had fallen down into the water. Didn't see any frogs or toads eggs though which would have helped perhaps identify these species. Frogs' heads sticking out from under leaves all over the place. There was one that had some yellowish speckling on it. It also had some white tips to its uh, toes on the front legs, as did the darker frogs. So I'm actually guessing that they are the same species despite the differences in coloration on the rest of the body. Very difficult to tell indeed. Several earthworms tumbled out of the bank above this drainage ditch and uh, fell down either into the water or onto the leaves. Eventually one of the frogs spotted it and moved in. Grabbed hold of it and uh, after a, a short while made off to a different part of the pool with this <laughs> earthworm and spent uh, the next couple of minutes trying to swallow it down. Well, after four hours, I would have liked to have stayed on until it uh, got to dusk when uh, we might have had a better chance of a snake appearing but inevitably uh, at this season and especially at this altitude the rain moved in and forced me back into my car and then in fact off to home. This morning we went to have a look at the area of wetland that we had filmed in February. The pools had been replaced by dry, shallow craters and the ground looked thirsty. And instead of rain, icy winds blew.
I knelt between the yellow flowers which had survived and that were so hardy against the harsh weather. The wind had really picked up and um, this shows you how the weather can change here in Lesotho and how temperamental it is. Not even two hours later when we returned to the same spot, uh, the snow was falling and we were battling to keep the camera still. We left the scene frozen to the bone and needing something hot to drink. We returned the next morning and something new awaited us. The landscape lay still. The craters were filled with snow and the wind had died completely. Leaving the yellow cauliflower heads frozen stiff. On a bend in the river, just south of Namaseri, there is a heronry that has been growing over the years. By a heronry, I mean a breeding site for mainly darters and cormorants. It's strange that even though there are no herons nesting in the site, the term is still a heronry. Basically, with all the protection they have, the isolation on a tree surrounded by water, it leaves crocodiles as being probably the most constant threat to individuals from this nesting site. The ones that are most vulnerable, in my opinion, are the sub-adults that are getting ready to develop feathers and to start moving on. I say that they're most vulnerable because they're the ones that are moving around the tree a lot. They're webbed feet, not designed for really hanging onto branches by any means. And once they're up on the branch and heading up high towards the nest, it's not a, a safe place for them by any means. They still fall. This bird now, getting quite weak, has to start that whole process again. These are the ideal opportunities for crocs to, to come in and predate on these birds. There were several crocs that came to the heronry. The biggest being just over three meters. It's quite a large croc to focus primarily on, on catching birds around this heronry. We hear a slight splash or a bit of activity against the reeds in one corner and then the croc would appear again and he would have a baby bird in his mouth. Drown it very, very slowly. and swallow it. The 
birds get a bit startled and as soon as the croc has swallowed and sinks back down to his normal posture of eye and nose and ear, everybody seems to just carry on. 